I think the first thing I'd love to say is the future of advertising is everyone being involved with ideas, not just people who have creative beside their title. I think what happens in our education system is that when you're around the age of like 9 or 10 or 11, if you can't draw well, you're told you're actually not supposed to go into math or science or something else. And of course now, as, you know, as we grow up, we understand that creativity is not at all about drawing. It's about ideas. And some of us have unfortunately been siphoned off into slightly kind of incorrect careers because we, we believed that we weren't creative. But that's why I think advertising, the great thing about it, especially now, is that it is about that, ideas. And I believe everyone is capable of it. At MNC, I say, I don't actually give a fuck who comes up with it, as long as somebody does. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. And yes, ultimately, the creatives might execute it but it's up to every one of us to come up with ideas and do thinking for the future. I thought, how, do you, how does one talk about the future? It's actually very elusive. And I thought, in terms of this talk, how can I help? Um, how, could I, you know, how could we all go to work tomorrow and keep in, do, do some things that maybe we're not doing yet that we can keep in mind? That may not be a guarantee for a canned gold, I don't know, but they are definitely things that we need to be doing right now to create modern, relevant ideas. So no matter what the future holds, I believe you need to do these ten things, at the very least. Principle number one, figure out what the brand stands for, what it believes and how it behaves, not just what it says. I believe a lot of brands have had a very superficial view on the world because all they had to do was perhaps a TV spot. So they had to come up with a script. But what is the brand about? What's at the DNA? What's at the heart of the brand? What is its purpose? And I think it's a really important thing for us to have as we have to do multi-channel communications or else there's nothing to work with. There's no heart. There's no substance. And I think it's very important with some clients that maybe you have to go back to the start. Maybe you have to reinvent. And I love the notion of reinvention. There's a lot of clients at MNC have been there for a long time. I think we have to reinvent the old. It's not just about having shiny new clients. It's about having clients that maybe have done things certain way for a long time, but how do we help them move forward? Chipotle in the States, I think, is a very good example of a company that went, you know what? What we're doing isn't working, or even if it is kind of working, it's not going to take us into the future. So how do we take a step back and figure out what we're about? Over the last 17 years, Chipotle's brand story has evolved from talking about burritos to how they're sourcing the best sustainable ingredients. Instead of just putting big burritos on billboards, we help Chipotle create a content-driven marketing platform to tell this deeper story. The platform, called Cultivate a Better World, was designed to emotionally engage customers in Chipotle's journey to create a more sustainable future. I think what an incredibly brave move. Instead of having advertising that said open wide, open wider, where you just feel, I feel like you're just trying to sell me something. Instead it said, you know what? We got caught up in the manufacturing process. We got caught up in things that actually weren't right. And we're going to go back to the start, literally. We're going to actually admit it publicly that we need to change the way we think about what we're doing. I'm going back to the start. But what they end up with was a really wonderful, rich heart of the brand that we as agencies can work with. And it's just in incredible to think that most, I think a lot of companies haven't done this yet. But it makes our job a lot easier because you'll all be quite familiar with the piece of content that was done at one Grand Prix at Cannes last year, the wonderful film, that expressed those values. And it, they could only have done that film if they'd gone back to the heart to figure that out at the beginning. Principle number two, create the core ingredients of a brand so they can be used in any channel. I think when we talk about integrated, we've got beyond you know, the whole matching luggage notion, but how do we make sure that whatever channel we're in, everything, is, uh, everything works together, everything belongs with each other without you know, duplication but a translation from one medium to the next. Things like tone of voice, color, language, brand representatives, typography, ownable graphics, visuals, photography, sound, and philosophy are all the but for me, the deconstructed elements that make up of the brand. Because you think of O2, for example. 
think about two in your head. You start to think of the blue, you start to think of the bubbles, you think of the roundness of the O, you might think of the O2 arena, start to think of properties. But the way we think of a brand, I think, is made up of colors and visuals <coughs> and perhaps and words, language, tone. And by deconstructing those, that's how we can make sure at the heart of whatever we're working on, we figure all those out. So whether it's a radio spot or a digital campaign or a TV ad, it doesn't matter because all those ingredients are still Hello, at the core of it. And I want to show an example of a uh, brand that's done this particularly well. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell. What's in your hand? Back at me. I have it. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamonds. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. Because they figured out what was at the heart of the brand when they reinvented it. They said, we're not going to make it what it was. We're going to make it what it could be. So, for example, if you look at the core of it, they, they had this notion of a, a messiah. This is the man who knows all. The perfect man. It's all about decadent moments. It's not about having a nice candlelight dinner. It's about those diamonds, those tickets you want. It's about kind of the ultimate uber romance. Speaking to women, it's about addressing them as opposed to just men. The man your man could smell like. And it's, of course, still very much on men's side. So when you take all those plus the art direction and the, very, the beautiful language, I think, that was created around it, you get this core the brand ingredients, so then no matter what channel you're in, they're there, as exhibited by the responses campaign. J.S. Beals, thank you for your tweet, and I'd be honored to honorably honor your honorable request. Miss Angela A. Hutt-Chamberlain, it seems like yesterday that you met J.S. Beals, but your love has blossomed from a seed into a fully grown love plant, and now it's time to fertilize that plant. Angela A. Hutt-Chamberlain, will you make J.S. Beals the happiest man in the world and marry him in real life? We'll be eagerly awaiting And because they figured out what the brand ingredients were about, they knew to bring in the chandeliers with the candles burning, the honorable, honorable line. You know, that's the language that they created. So no matter whether it's radio, TV, digital, that's the language that they use. That's very specifically chosen language. So they're very specific words. And you'll find any great brand knows the words they use and the words they don't use. And I think that's terrific. I applaud that. And we cannot talk about the brand without figuring out what is the role of innovation for that brand. Because every brand has to incorporate it somehow. But it's very different. You'll have some clients that are very forward thinking. You'll have some clients that are still kind of, the pennies still dropping for them in terms of the role of digital, the role of innovation, the role of technology. And I think as agencies, we have to remember that the same whiz-bang technology we might use for the Nike client and customer actually isn't the same as what we would use for M&S. And it's very different from what we use for Honda and every other client. It can't be the same kind of technology for everyone. And this always goes back to insight and the idea, what is the right insight behind the technology for the particular brand that you're working on? Principle number three, the consumers are some of the work for us. I think as agencies, we've become control freaks. And I actually am a control freak myself, so I'm self-confessed. But I think agencies sometimes have to let go, create something, and let others participate in it. In Sweden, something unusual example. is happening. Normally, a country that has a Twitter account uh, has that account run by an official of the government. Not so in Sweden. Uh, the people there are, are actually in charge. In 2011, we became the first country in the world to let go of an official communication channel and hand it over to our citizens. So I think sometimes it's okay to create something and then let it go, and let other people participate. And if it's interesting enough, they will. Principle number four, do less ads, more ideas. I think this is really important. I think we all kind of know this one by now. Um, and sometimes it can just be in a really unexpected place, like this example. Så 
Somebody said, actually, how can we reinvent one of the most important consumer touch points, which is someone doing their telephone banking? How can we make it an enjoyable experience? How can we make people actually want to call and feel something? Principle number five, make it, then make it famous. I think one of the wonderful thing, the things that's happened is that uh, because of things going online, you only have to have 200 people actually experience it because the rest of the world can see it. Principle number six, do some good. Again, going back to the Chipotle example, I think it's really important, again, for brands to have a sense of altruism about what they, what they do, what they stand for. I think people are looking for brands that have the values, that have substance, that have heart, that have purpose. We're all smart. We can see through the brands that don't, and I think feel more affinity with the brands that have that. Levi's um, Go Forth campaign that was done in Braddock, Pennsylvania was a wonderful example of going back to what the heart of Levi's was about and doing some good at the same time. Levi's agreed to help with the renovation of the Braddock Community Center, the doubling in size of the Braddock Urban Farm, and the safeguarding of the nation's first Carnegie Library. Levi's then shot and created all its communication around its workwear collection in Braddock with the workers of Braddock. And I think it's not a nice to do, I think it's a must do now. I think every, every organization, every company has to think about how can they make the world a better place. Principle number seven, the more you try the digital and social spaces, the easier it will be to come up with ideas that include them, or at the very least be able to have a conversation about them. There was somebody that I, that I worked with who's, who we were at a meeting, and um, he said, Elspeth, can you turn on Facebook so we can show that idea to our client? I was like, turn on Facebook? Whatever. <laughs> you know, and it, it astounds me. My philosophy is you are never too old, and it is never too late. And I think even if you decide that Pinterest isn't for you, it's a really good idea to go, experience it, see what it's like, and actually you may enjoy it. I think it behooves us all to give it a chance, even if you decide, after today, I'm never going to do it again. Because at some point, it actually may provide you with a really great idea for the client you're working for. Principle number eight. Think of a memorable title. It improves instant recall of an idea by as much as 80%. Okay, that's a made-up stat. <laughs> I made that up. But I actually really think it could be true. I think it used to be about titles on TV scripts. How can we have a fun title for this TV spot? But it's not about that at all anymore. And you'll know that by thinking of some of the best ideas over the last number of years, there's actually a really great title. It's a title, it's a handle that makes me remember it that illustrates kind of what the idea is about, like Uniqlo. the clock. Oh, okay, Come on, combination of Uniqlo and a clock, right? And it, it acts, from a search perspective, you need to have those unique terms. So instead of for a Whopper sacrifice going, I'm searching for an idea about, I'm gonna not, you know, defriend someone because they, you know, in case, in, in that way I'll win a Whopper. Uh, I put Whopper sacrifice in, it automatically comes up. So I think titles are really important. I tell it to, tell it with the, to the creative people all the time at MC, you've got to have a great handle. It'll make it that much more memorable. Next principle is to be inspired what people actually watch on YouTube. I think it would suggest that advertising actually should be a whole lot more fun. So I think when you look at what people are actually looking at, and whether you hate or love Psy, or enjoy the ultimate dog tease, auto-tune with the latest one with Nick Clegg, hilarious, it, it's about realizing what actually people enjoy.
and this is what's been the wonderful thing in the last few years, we actually have a chance to literally by the numbers, by data, actually see what people are responding to the most and I think that's really important. It actually allows me to say to my clients, you know, have more fun. People are up for really engaging silly things. Principle number 10, we should never ever forget that it always starts with a simple, insightful idea. So for me, no matter how techy and complex the world gets, and it's wonderful, I think, how advertising has changed and the opportunities that we do have now to express our creativity, to express ideas, it has to begin with that. And without that, we have nothing. But again, the idea is something that everyone in this room is capable of thinking of. Thank you very much. <laughs>